Hi, my name is Steve Kinsley. I'm the Chief Wackadoo at Wackadoo Information Systems. Today we're talking about the heart and soul of the contract to close web application, how to create custom task lists. Now, the way that contract to close works is that when you create a new contract, it takes templates and copies them over and assigns them as tasks for a specific contract, making copies. So it's just a copy mechanism. When you're working on the contract, you've got the tasks that are all there, but when you're actually creating it, that's when the templates come into play. Now, if you're working with just one real estate team as a transaction coordinator, then you probably just have the one that you're gonna use. But you might be working with two or three different teams, in which case you might set up two or three different sets of, or a group, template group of templates. So today we're gonna to talk about the templates. We're not gonna talk about the task list page. We're not gonna talk about the overall flow through contract to close. Those are two videos that you need to look at before you watch this one because we're gonna just assume that you know that stuff and you will have seen the things that are on them. So without further ado, let's dive in. What we're gonna start with is the menu down here in the lower left-hand side. Under custom templates, we see task templates. Now, for those of you who have seen the backup and restore video, these templates would be included as part of those. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go watch the backup and restore video. So working across the top here, we see that we have just one set, one template group, again, template group. We have some template group controls over here for add, copy, delete, things like that. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna copy the default ones, which we have selected, and we're gonna give them a name, and this is my new task list. And we'll click OK, and yes, I'm sure I wanna do that. Now, it doesn't take terribly long to do this. We're working on our production system as we shoot this video, so you get an idea for you know, how the system performs. But now when we look at our list, we see, oh, there's my new task list. Now, that's not a terribly useful name, so which gives us room to do the rename mechanism. So as we mentioned before, this is likely to be something that you would do on a per real estate team basis. So we're gonna call this one real estate team A. And so now when we look at that, we go, okay, great, real estate team A. I've got a copy of that, renamed, boom, there we go. Now, if I was to decide that I didn't wanna work with them anymore or I wanted to just delete this and start over, I could hit the delete button on the one that I have selected and it will tell me it's gonna delete that and all of the task templates assigned to it. Now, the difference between a task and a task template is that a task template has not been assigned to a contract. The template's just the thing that you use to copy from here when you create the contract. And we'll, we'll show you that in a moment. Now, uh, the buttons here, print and export, uh, give you zipped up files. One of them gives you a zipped text file that you can open in any text editor that contains the entire uh, setup for real estate team A in this case. And the other will give you a spreadsheet that's a little bit more readable um, and is used for people who want to sort of print out what's there and then manipulate it on paper and figure out what they want to do task-wise before they come into the tool here to um, reassign what tasks are available and to redefine those. Now, something I want to point out here that is extremely dangerous and uh, you're not ever going to want to do this is the reload defaults button. Now, I say you're never going to want to do this. In reality, while you're setting up your templates, you might want to start from scratch or you might want to reload or clear things. What this does is first it gives you a warning that this is not really a good idea to do this. So heed that. What it's going to do is it's going to wipe out everything that you did to create task templates and task template groups. And what it's going to do is give you just the defaults back though, because there is a set of defaults that's on the server that if you hit this button, it's going to wipe everything out and just load the one. And it's the one that we started with for now. Um, we uh, are working in a non-escrow state. And so the tasks are tuned for that. Um, it could very well be that uh, by the time you see this video and then look at the software that there will be a default escrow set of tasks as well. So... In this template group, or this task list, again, I'm using those terms interchangeably and incorrectly and inconsistently, you have three types of tasks. You have one for each contract type. You have buyer tasks, you have seller tasks, and you have listing tasks. So we're gonna look at a buyer example just 
because. And we are going to go in and let's pretend that there is a, we want to make a change because the states come out with a new thing saying, hey, when you do your agency documentation, you have to have this other document. We don't know what it's called. We're just making this up. And it's probably a really bad example, but here we go anyway. So I want to verify some new form is posted. Um, just to be consistent there, I'll say OK. And now, boom, we've added a new task. That's all it took. I hit the new task template button and typed in the name, and there it is. Now, it's not necessarily where I want it, so I'm going to drag it and move it up and drop it up here on the verify WWREA form. And you see that it inserted it there. Now, if we go look at the detail for this, so we've created a task, we've named it. Now we're going to look at the detail and we're going to tune the details of this task. So there's the name. I can change it right here if I want to. Um, I can change the task type. And this is, from a functional standpoint, there are only a couple of things in here that actually um, have additional function. Um, most of this is a categorization tool, but you want to assign the proper task type when you create a task because it is used throughout the system. So for example, uh, if I wanted to make an email task, then I would have to also assign an email template. Um, we're not going to do that. We're going to leave this as a just a generic task. Actually, no. Let me correct myself. I'm going to make this a compliance task because this is part of the agency documentation that the state required. That was our, our working example. So that sounds like a compliance thing. I'm going to make it a compliance task. Now, if this particular task required the involvement of your agent or the co-op agent on the other side of the transaction, or maybe the buyer or seller client or the attorney, lender, vendor, or escrow agent, you would, you would check the appropriate box. And if you were to select vendor, you would then also have to assign which type of vendor it would be that you're working with. So uh, that pretty much tells you sort of the structure of the task. Now over here on the right side, we're talking about scheduling for the task. What are the, the, the relative timings for this? Is this task scheduled relative to anything? No, it's scheduled relative to nothing. Are there any other tasks that are scheduled relative to this one? So after this one goes or before this one goes, we might have wanted to do something. And at this point, no. So I'm going to say, OK, we're happy that is a compliance task. And this is the little icon for, that we have for a compliance task. Uh, you'll notice there are a couple of different kinds of icons here. Uh, we have just a generic task. We have a dependency, which means we're waiting for some, from something from the outside, an external requirement. Uh, we have email tasks. Uh, we have phone tasks. There, are, You saw the list on the other, but you, there are different icons for each one of those. And uh, an important one to point out is a deadline task looks like a little calendar here. Uh, contract date, due diligence, and down here at the bottom, closing date. <clears throat> Those are the, the main ones that you're going to have on each of your, uh, each of your uh, task lists or your template groups. So let's go back to our verify some new form is posted task. This is our brand new one. Now, if you remember from the task list video, which of course you have watched by now, we're going to switch over to relate timing through drag and drop. I, and you'll see, sorry, over here on the left, the drag and drop message there tells you exactly what's going to happen. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to click down, and I'm going to drag my new task over, and I'm going to drop it on contract date, and that's going to tell me how to set these relative to each other timing-wise. Now, when I'm setting a task relative to another one, the time period being less than zero means it's before, and the time period greater than zero means it's after. So I want to do this four days after the contract date. So four days after the contract date, I have to make sure that some new form is posted. There it is. And we have uh, days, hours, and minutes um, in the choice here for a unit of time. So let's say OK. <clears throat> Now, when we go look at the definition of this task, we see that it is four days after. And I can adjust that time here. So let's make it five days. No big deal. OK, we're going to save that. Now I look over at contract date and I look at the definition of that. And you would expect rightly that verify some new task 
or sorry, some new document would be listed there on the tasks. And if we scroll down far enough, I'm looking for it. There it is. Verify some new form is posted after five, five days after this task is completed. Technically, contract date, due diligence date, uh, closing meeting, those are technically deadlines. That is a special type of task. Uh, it is guaranteed to have a uh, start date and it's something that we can work relative to on other tasks. So we have created a task, we have modified that task, we've walked through the details of what's available in defining that task, uh, we've reshuffled the order of the tasks, and we've scheduled that task relative to another one. That's pretty much you know, the bulk of, of what goes on when you're defining your task list. Now, uh, keep in mind that you can move things not just within one row. So I'm gonna come back up here and go change order. And I'm going to do something that I probably shouldn't do. I'm going to say process documentation. I'm going to go put this up and I'm going to drop it on inspections. Now watch what happens. So process agency documentation then becomes a top level one. It gets moved out of this new contract processing and all of the things that were underneath it are still there. Now, because this is clearly not what we want to do, um, I am going to drag that back in there, and I can't remember whether that was, on. I think that was above that one. Let's do that. Process agency documentation. So you see how you can move them around even from uh, across panels. So now the question is, where is this actually used? Now this gets into the contract flow, and this is why I wanted to have you watch those other videos. Because if you look in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, up here on the inbox, this would be where you're adding a new contract. Uh, you would come in here and you will notice a couple of things. First of all, the contract type lines up with the types of tasks that you have. Makes sense. Over here on the right corner, upper right corner, you have your complete list of template groups or task list template definitions. These are the things that you've created that are your custom tasks for the way that your team works. And you would say, okay, I'm on real estate team A and I am doing a buyer contract. And you would then fill in the rest of this stuff and you would be very happy with what goes on. Then after you approve the contract, then the way that that looks, again, this is all part of the overall flow rather than the template processing. You would select the contract, you would open the task list page and you see the same structure here that you saw there. So here's my process doc agency documentation task, okay? And in this case, they're red because they're late, but that's a whole different video. So we're gonna unselect this and come back down to task templates. So that's pretty much everything that you need to know about processing task template groups. Uh, this is how you customize your task lists for working in contract to close. And this is really the heart of it. So if you spend the time to set up your task lists the way that your real estate teams really work, you're going to find that you can handle a lot more uh, contract to close work, and that will allow your team to increase its productivity. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out to us directly as shown on the Contact Us page at wackadoo.info. Thank you very much.